During the last Steam sale, I bought two games about dwarves. Guess which one I wound up liking more. Nothing against Dwarf Fortress, of course. That game just seems to be more like a demonstration of the race's frailty, while Deep Rock Galactic is a celebration of their resilience. Send a crew of elves or halflings into the glyphid infested caverns of Hoxies, and they'd be dead within minutes. Nah, the interplanetary mining company of which this game is named after needs a hardier type. A crew that can be hired with the promise of all the gold they can carry and all the beer they can drink. Meet the roughest, toughest, and drunkest miners this side of the galaxy. Their mission. Nah, that sounds too epic. Their 9 to 5 is to drill deep and drain this planet dry of its resources. Sometimes that means building pipelines to liquid morkite pumps and maintaining them while they do their work. Sometimes management wants alien eggs for some dubious reason, so you gotta hack your way into these warm, gooey flesh sacks and snatch the eggs inside. Man, Space Easter sucks. Sometimes you gotta defend Dottie, the dutiful drill dozer, while it makes its way to a living rock, where it begins... The penetration process. Don't expect this to be some cushy job, though. You know how Left 4 Dead likes to keep you on your toes with zombie hordes out of nowhere? DRG does that too. Thankfully, with a little prior warning from Mission Control. A man who, you can tell, he really loves his job. How old are you? You're behaving like ill-mannered children. Please, stop it. These glyphids are out of control. They swarm, they bite, they fly, they roll, they stomp, they spit, they leave behind poison clouds when they die because they're just that vindictive, and the worst ones will snatch you up and give you the worst Uber ride of your life. What am I doing here? <laughs> Not all of the dangers in the mines have exoskeletons. Sometimes you'll get peppered by lithophage meteors that shake the screen hard enough to loosen a filling or two. Yes, shake my screen harder, daddy. And sometimes you'll get one big one that needs more specialized equipment to break into. Mission Control. How many rock crackers does it take to reach the plague heart center of a lithophage meteor? Robots from a rival corporation are especially deadly enemies. Cave leeches can yoink unsuspecting dwarves for an easy lunch. Sandstorms will blind you, giant pissed off plants will spit goo at you, and of course there's still mean old Mr. Gravity. It's rough down there, but don't worry, these boys have the tools for the job. Let me introduce you. Walk softly and carry a big fucking gun. Sure, he can lay on the hurt and bring the mobility with zip lines, but you know what the gunner is surprisingly good at? Being a rescue specialist. Just plop down that shield generator and anything short of some boss attacks will be powerless to stop you from getting a fellow dwarf back up. Whenever I go down and see a gunner coming my way, I know I'm in good hands. <laughs> The shortest distance between two points is a straight line. That is the mantra of the driller. Complicated series of caverns between you and the escape pod? Not a problem. Whip out your pair of drill arms and make extraction a non-issue. Need more space to maneuver for a point defense? Coming right up. Need an incoming pack of glyphids doused in one of three flavors of pain? My pleasure. Need the engineer punished for not using their platforms? Or the scout for not using their flares? Well, let's just say the blast radius of that C4 charge can be a lot bigger than it looks. Hi ho, hi ho. Oh shit, it's gonna blow! The driller is the heart of any group. He'll get you where you need to go, be that the next cavern or hell. This dude is all about solving problems, and is my personal go-to when I want to get serious. That platform gun is a super handy tool. Your co-workers keep taking fall damage? Eh, throw some cheese down, they'll be fine. I always like to make battle arenas for Hearthstone and Caretaker fights. If you think it looks pointless, then you underestimate the value of a clearly visible and level catwalk while all this craziness is going on. But the best part of playing Engineer is the grenade launcher. Aw oh, man, I love this thing. It was fun at first, but then I started getting overclocks and my dopamine levels went through the roof. So far I have two options for entirely different playstyles. 
Fat Boy for War Crimes Against Arachnids, or Precision Annihilation with Hyper Propellant. Set up pipelines, fill the on site refinery, and launch the goods back to orbit. Nothing could be simpler. If you can hit your shots consistently, especially on bosses, this overclock will make you the most valuable member of your team. Just be sure to take some ammo upgrades. If you want to fly through the air like you just don't care, go with Scout. Your job is to keep dark places lit and to collect any out of reach materials in the walls. Your flare gun is a powerful tool, so be prepared to have an annoyed group if you don't use it. Aziz, light! Much better, thank you, Aziz. I didn't bother much with the scout until around 60 hours of playtime because I was afraid he'd be too fragile. But man, after being stuck with the slower jobs for so long, his mobility was downright liberating. The grapple gun is such a fun tool. It even alters the laws of physics by erasing the concept of terminal velocity. Okay, I fucked that up. Yeah, like that. Yeah, he can go down pretty easy, but he gets some weapon perks that can speed you up after each kill. And there's even an overclock that gives you bullet time while aiming in the air. Also, one of his grenades is a friggin' boomerang. It's awesome. If you want your Deep Rock experience to be a little less Minecraft and a little more, I don't know, Risk of Rain 2, try the Scout. In the past four months, I have put over 130 hours into Deep Rock Galactic. And that's not just because it's fun and a great pick up and play game, it also has the power of personality on its side. It's all the little things that add to the game's charm, you know? For example, most hard workers like to end their day with a cold one. Not these boys. Monster hunters need a belly full of bursting before a strenuous hunt, and dwarves need impaired judgment and motor skills before handling dangerous equipment. I have never seen a game glorify beer more than this one. You get the daily special for different buffs like less fall damage, more health, or a huge increase on mined gold. But beer is good for a lot more than just buffing, which is why you also get a bunch of other drinks for varying levels of a good time. Good thing DRG has the finest medical facilities available. Unfortunately, space is kinda limited, so naturally the dangerously infectious rockpox samples are stored right next to the recovery beds. Before you even ask, no, it's not submerged in alcohol, and no, you can't drink it. Back to beer, there's one drink that nobody ever orders, unless free from the judgmental eyes of other co-workers. It's the equivalent of going drinking with the boys and ordering a Shirley Temple. The Leaf Lovers. Oh sure, it's great for sobering up before a mission, but that is not the dwarven way. Don't ever speak of what happened here today. Real talk, I joined a lobby once and somebody thought it would be a hoot to order a round of leaf lovers for everybody. Unfortunately, I was too slow on the record button to catch the host yelling, Who the f ordered leaf lovers so I can kick you? I was laughing my ass off. And don't worry, I found the perfect solution for getting rid of it. <laughs> I think that's what I love the most about this game, the community. With games like Counter-Strike, Overwatch, and League of Legends, the communities are so toxic that it's a meme at this point. In DRG, the meme is how good our players are. Sure, we'll friendly fire each other for a laugh, but we'll also fight to the death to get them back on their feet. And I love our little rituals. Like after excavating a giant gold nugget, it's customary for dwarves to pace around it whilst proclaiming their newfound wealth. Don't question it, that's just how we do, much to the annoyance of mission control. Yes, yes, you're rich. Kindly gonna move on. I got management breathing down my neck here. Loot bugs. Everybody loves these little dudes. They're so adorable that you can even buy plushies of them. Most dwarves refuse to kill them, and I don't blame them. These guys are great. I can't imagine why anybody would want to hurt them. Who cares that they're chock full of valuable gold and nitra? Live and let live, I say. Rock and Stone. You didn't think I'd forget to mention Rock and Stone, did you? Starting a mission? Rock and Stone. Ending a mission? Rock and Stone. Failing a mission? Well, I'd still Rock and Stone if I could. Check out some of my Rocks and Stones. Yeah, I'm a real Hank Schrader. 
The best thing about DRG, and something that deserves a lot of praise, is that with the way this game is structured, it could have so easily been infected with loot boxes and microtransactions. But because the folks at Coffee Stain and Ghost Ship Games are not, quote, bad people, they resisted the urge and instead made everything unlockable just by playing the game, the way it used to be. There are six minerals that act as currency, and they're all obtained by keeping a sharp eye out in the mines, and assignment rewards, or by enduring highway robbery at the trading station. Whoever said those prices need to get their ass kicked. The loot box equivalent would be lost gear and cargo crates that can be opened by tracking down a couple batteries and plugging them in. You don't buy them, they aren't random drops, they're a gameplay mechanic that reward putting in a little extra effort. Hell, they even resisted the urge to sell a season pass. The only things you can buy are supporter packs, which give some unique skins and other minor goodies. I bought one on sale just because I like this game so much. Getting the ghost ship skull helmet was just an added bonus. It feels like DRG was conceived as a giant f**k you to the AAA publishers that are still trying their hardest to ruin this good industry. You almost have to buy it just out of sheer admiration, and when it goes on sale for just 10 bucks, you really have no excuse not to. Now, I know it looks like we're invading this planet, tearing it apart, robbing it blind, polluting the ecosystem, and killing almost everything that moves, all while under the influence, but I gotta tell you, man, it has to be this way. I spent 20 bucks on a pickaxe for this bit, so you'd better watch it.